problem in that. Um, if we feel that the hymns are old, why don't we write new ones? Why don't we write others that will have the same theological depth, the same theological breadth, and be also useful for our worship services? So these are a few of the things I can say about a theological assessment of contemporary church music. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we've seen that um, we have uh, musicians uh, producing and singing questionable theology uh, songs that are with questionable theology. And this will uh, uh, t lead me to uh, a professor, Professor Emmanuel Oyemomi. Uh, we know that we are witnessing the rise of gospel artists globally today. And uh, their impact on the theology of church music. Uh, sir, do you think this has contributed in any way to the expansion of the kingdom of God? Thank you very much. Um, all truth, all truth is God's truth. Music is a gift of God, and it is expressed not only in the church, but even in the secular places. But the truth is that God has set up the church as a binger of light to show example and to determine and dictate the tune that the world will copy. That was God's intention, even to set up the nation of Israel initially. But from record, the nation of Israel failed God. I pray in our own time we will not fail God. Um, the it's a pleasure, it's, it's good that there is explosion of gospel artists all around the world. But the truth is that many of the songs that we are hearing around the world, uh, as uh, Professor Yinaya has just highlighted, many of them are theologically deficient. <laughs> even the best of the singing, and we have them all around us. And that's a great challenge for us. And God knew that challenge far ahead of time for him to have allowed this kind of a department to take root since the 90s. And so it becomes our own responsibility to assess what we're doing and see how we can become salt that we season the theology of the singing that is going on around the world. If I will say how has it impacted the church? One, it has impacted the church both positively and negatively. How has it impacted the church positively? It has awakened the youth in the church to be willing to sing. That's why Many a time when you ask our children to come and lead praise singing, it is some of the songs they had outside there that they use on the pulpit to sing praises. That when you analyze it, you soon see theological content. You don't see it glorifying God. And some of it sometimes are the type that even insults God. For example, like the lyrics, that's for our friend from below. See, singing, he cannot clap, he cannot sing, and he's, he's behaving like a dull person who didn't appreciate God. What kind of theology can you bring out of that? What kind of praise does that mean to God? So it has impacted us one way to sing, in another way, it has impacted us negatively by copying what's going on out there 
and bringing it unassessed into the church setting. And how has it also impacted us is that those of us who are well trained, because one of the peculiarities with the training in the music department of our seminary is that people here are primarily trained to be a pastor. On top of being trained as a musician, skillful in their own right. So it's like a double training combined together. Double major. They are like double major. So when pastors are relaxing, I do say this everywhere because I have a little leg in music. And when, when pastors are relaxing that they have completed their assignment, that's the work of music student begins. Because he has to be on his piano if you really want to do well. If you really want to glorify God, you want to be on the piano a minimum of two hours per day. Perhaps one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening. So they become so much hard on people. After all those training, when they get into the church, many of them become so legalistic, so hard on people. finding a common ground wherein they can bring them together, bring them down, show them the way how to do it. And uh, even in training too, we can become so legalistic that uh, instead of finding a way to bring out the gem in them and making them see what they have not seen, what they don't know, you know, you see that sometimes that disparity is there and sometimes we lose them out. The work look enormous. But then, God has set us up. Not just for fun. It's for a purpose. And it's a whole ministry by itself. But one, by the kind of an example that we will give. By the kind of making ourselves to be skillfully available. Both in the spiritual realm. By setting the pace. Both even for the pastor, because sometimes musicians are regarded as second-class citizens in the church ministry. As if to say they are the errand boy of the church or, or they are about, rather than the senior pastor. But then, if we realize what God set us up to do, the work of the music minister is going to impart even the senior pastor. Is going to set the pace for the kind of inspiration for him to interpret the word of God. Like you know what the mistress did for Elisha when he was to prophesy. So these are the little dimensions that I can point out as to the impact, the uh, explosion of uh, global uh, gospel artists has brought upon the theology of the church in the singing ministry. Thank you, sir. Uh, we, now that we have seen that uh, many of these uh, gospel musicians and uh, even church musicians, uh, many just copy a sing song that they have gotten from uh, the recordings uh, just worldly song without considering the uh, the theological content of the uh, of the of the songs and using worship uh, of God now uh, we would like uh, Reverend uh, gracious Okoronko to help us and uh, gather thought uh, then what are the tasks of music ministry in a local church and uh, also what can we consider as the the roles of the music minister even in the general life of the church uh, in the light of this thank you very much sir it's a, a privilege to meet my professors i appreciate uh, this opportunity um uh, i want to just uh, maybe Add to what uh, Dr. Oeni said or defined as music uh, ministry, 
and I'm going to take my clue from, you must have heard about Evelyn Miller. We mentioned her several times today as one of the pioneer um, lecturers here who taught music uh, in different ways. And she defined the music ministry, the church music ministry as the church-wide ministry for Christ, which involves the entire congregation, and that is participants uh, in church of all ages, of all levels, of all organizations, carrying out the functions of the church through music, but having its basic task being administered by the workers of the music ministry. I fully agree with this definition. And uh, unfortunately, part of what has become the limitation we have today is that uh, uh, music ministers or perhaps choir masters and music directors for our churches have been limited to only the choir, maybe to say the uh, uh, music ministry as, as, as uh, maybe the only uh, area or the sphere where they could have their influence over. But we want to uh, educate us or perhaps let us know, remind us that the church music ministry is a church-wide ministry that is not limited to only the choir but the entire congregation. So if, if, if you are a music minister, you are a pastor to the entire church, and not uh, maybe a glorified choir master who is meant to only pastor the, the choristers and neglect, neglect the uh, congregation, um, let us avoid such limitations. I just thought to give that as just to buttress on that so that I will take my clue to be able to talk about the task of the music ministry from that angle. And having said that, I would want to um, say that the task of the music ministry cannot be apart from the core task of the church. Because the mandate that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 28, from verse 18 to 20, which we now refer, we refer to as the Great Commission, is for everybody, including the musicians. And if he has said we should go, then the musician will also go. If I says to teach, to disciple, and to baptize them, and to preach, then that's exactly what the musician also does. So the task of the music ministry can be summarized into what I also call the functions of the church, the core function of the church, in terms of uh, the church is, exists to worship God, that's number one. The church is also there to witness for Christ. So the music ministry is also there to witness the church is also there to minister to the, to the souls and the hearts and the minds of the people. So the music ministry's task is to also minister. And of course, the church is also there uh, for fellowship, for, I mean, uh, uh, educate. Yes, to educate the congregation. And the music ministry should also, by her ministry, educate the church. Right? Through our songs, we should be able to teach, we should be able to minister, we should be able to witness we should be able to preach the word of God. We should be able to disciple people through the songs we sing. So the, the task of the music ministry of the church uh, cannot be apart from the task or the core functions of the church. You know, but from this angle now, the church, uh, the, the music ministry can diversify and begin to break them into bits, into, you know, uh, further planning, training, and doing other things to be able to help the church achieve her, her goals. So I want to just list up a few things here that I believe would also be the roles or the, uh, the uh, part of the core task that the music ministry should handle. Having seen that uh, the holistic or the ultimate uh, um, uh, goal is for us to worship, to educate, to minister, to witness to the people, then the music minister should be able to prepare, pray and plan, to sing songs, singing materials that are in line with the goal and objective of the church. That is why planning with the senior pastor of the church or with the church leadership is very, very important. The music minister must understand what the goal of the church is what, and how the goals have been broken. If, for instance, uh, the pastor is such a planner that, uh, you know, further uh, uh, breaks down his uh, plans into months, into weeks, the music minister should be able to focus on whatever the church is focusing on. In other words, when you are selecting a song, that's letting a son that is going to go in line with the message the pastor is preaching in order to buttress the message so that we don't end up confusing the church, you know, with different messages, but complementing the ministry of, 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 of the pulpit with the songs we sing. And most of the times, when that is done, there's a collaboration. What the, the pastor had preached, when the musician sings something along that line, it collaborates, and I tell you, the people don't get to forget this. They go back home with that message and it's going to last longer in their hearts because the same music they sang 
uh, you know, kind of collaborate what the pastor preached. And then, of course, secondly, to maintain the right attitude towards God is important. And our preacher for today, uh, Reverend Dr. Ade Andrew, mentioned a lot of things about, you know, earthly singing and godly singing. And, of course, we saw the attributes there. A music minister must be one who, is, who shows example, who is exemplary in his life, in spirituality, in musicality, in everything he does. He must be somebody who is able to conduct himself, uh, uh, who, I mean, uh, rightly before the Lord. Thirdly is to enter into worship wholeheartedly. The music minister should be able to enter into worship wholeheartedly. What do I mean by this? You have to first be a worshiper before you can lead, a worship, you can lead in worship. It is very important. Dr. God himself. A participant in worship, you know, together in honor of God. But we are only prompters as musicians, just like the pastor and other leaders of worship may also be, who are prompting the people to join together with us to give worship to God, which is important. And I think uh, that should be uh, taken note of. Uh, number four there is to join hands with the pastoral staff to ensure that whatever goals and objectives have been set for each service, be it midweek service or, you know, the church service, Sunday service, or whatever service, the goals and objectives are achieved through the effort that you put in to music. All right? Number five, to be open to the Spirit of God. These are all the tasks. These are roles of the music minister. Yeah, and that's why Dr. Davison taught us something that we've not forgotten. He said, your worship planning begins on your knees. Worship planning begins on your knees. What does that mean? You must constantly go to God in prayer to ask the Lord for direction. Because one of the most difficult uh, aspects of the music ministry is selection. We don't hurriedly select songs. And that is why if you have a pastor who is not a good planner, it becomes a huge problem or a huge challenge for the music minister. Because if you bring a topic or maybe a particular theme you want to preach on, on a Saturday, it makes it difficult for the music minister to be able to get the right song and prepare the choir for such ministry. So it's important that we have pastors who are also uh, equally good in planning. I also want to add uh, that uh, the music minister is to also sift through the songs we sing in church. Following what our theologians have said here, there are a lot of songs out there. They may sound very nice. The lyrics sometimes may sound very nice. But it is our job as music ministers to, before we teach them to the church or sing them in the church, we sift through them to protect the heart of the people, to protect the people from wrong doctrines, protect the people from bad theology, protect the people from things that would damage them instead of building them up. So the music minister must first and foremost read through the lyrics of the song, understand the song, and be able to find a scripture that backs that kind of song before such a song is presented in the church to avoid wrong theology. So it is our job to protect the heart of the people by trying to make sure that what songs we sing are theologically and biblically balanced. And it's also our job to train the entire church because uh, from Evelyn Miller's definition of, of the church-wide music ministry, you, you would realize that the congregational singing is one of the important aspects of the church music ministry. It's a very important aspect of the church music ministry. And I'm going to talk about that later if I have the opportunity uh, to speak again. Of course, lastly, uh, to build or to be an example to the people, to develop harness potentials among God's people, because we have been trained, and by our training, we are meant to also train others in order to build and raise more disciples that will further take this work beyond where our strength and our power can take the work. So there's so much more that the music minister could actually do within the church setting. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, now that we know that uh, the music ministry exists to educate the church and um, uh, witness and also to uh, uh, for the equipment of, 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 of uh, the children of God and also the Lord has put somebody there to carry out this ministry with the music minister or the worship uh, minister. Now uh, we, we want to know and I will ask uh, uh, professor, Professor Adideji, sir, 
uh, with all this and uh, what are the challenges uh, that the music ministry is grappling with, especially in this postmodern world? Thank you very much, our moderator. Um, I think um, I'm excited to have two big professors on my right and left hand who, who sincerely appreciate music and uh, are supportive to our faculty of church music. I thought we would give them a round of applause. I'm also excited uh, with the contributions of our friends from Baylor University. Because since they arrived and we interacted, we have learned a lot from them. I have personally learned a lot from them. Incidentally, yesterday, we were in Professor Ingo's class. And uh, we had group discussions on challenges in church music. Prof was there. He was in my group. And uh, Gracious was also in my group. And we had very fruitful discussions. How I wish that the, real, the, the music ministers will be here. Our alumni, alumni, most of them are not here. And the kind of things we are discussing here, they are indispensable for our growth and our uh, knowledge. So we, we may not be able to exhaust all the challenges, but let me mention about 13 of them in the air, quickly. We established the, the challenge of divisions, both inter and intra-denominational. Inter-denominational in terms of uh, concepts of worship, practice, worship, music, and all that. Then we also have um, divisions intra among the musicians themselves, among the music ministers, between the senior colleagues and the junior colleagues. The senior colleagues who may not want the juniors to, to shine or to function. We have seen factors such as ego, envy, Unnecessary, you know, rivalry, you know, are really militating against our effectiveness. Number two is syncretism or syncretic practices. Today we have got a lot of demonic and secular styles in church. Things we call secular, things that should not be brought into the church. Recently, there was a video clip circulating on the social media where Reverend sisters, a group of reverend sisters, they were dancing buga. As if that was not enough, I will not mention the name, an archbishop publicly, you know, saw nothing wrong with it, you know, dancing buga. Um, we have all these things that are going on among us. There are what I would consider unbiblical collabo, you know, what we call collabo, collaborating with secular artists, you know, to produce uh, gospel music. Um, that's with believers, collaborating with unbelievers. And then we say we are singing. I said, no wonder why the music is no longer transformative. Number three is what we call gener generational gap. We discussed yesterday between the oldies and the young. Uh, young people in the church, 
the young people we want very fast, very fast music, noisy like our preacher, you know, uh, told us the other time, noisy, a kind of uh, uh, meaningless uh, gyration in the church. Meanwhile, the old people will want something solemn, something that will really minister. So it's a becoming a challenge. So where the choir goes with the young generation, the old people, they are cut off. As if they are not part of people who should worship God. They, they won't find the, the, the worship interesting. And where, again, the church, you know, the church choir goes to the other side to sing things that are slow, meditative. The youth, they are not interested in that. In fact, you see them walking out. You see them. So that, that's another challenge that we have. We have the, the challenge of uh, what we call worship war. That's what we call worship war in the study of worship. Where styles clash. It's, you know, it's stylistic interest between the pastor, the church pastor, the music minister, or even the church. And here, I think music ministers, we should know that it is not our role um, to, to satisfy ourselves while we are asked to lead worship. Like Gracia said, we are to lead the church. We are to lead them to the throne of God to worship. So it's not for us to satisfy our stylistic interest. So that has led to worship war. We have leadership crisis, which is also common um, in the church, uh, between the church and, and uh, the church leaders and musicians. Sometimes the church choir will want to buy musical instruments. The church leaders will say, what is the meaning of that? We don't even have the money for that. There's inadequate commitment on our part too. We that are music ministers. Some of us that have multi-dimensional ministries, we are guilty. I am a musician, I'm a musicologist, but I'm also a church pastor. I pastor a church. Uh, I'm from Pentecostal background. I'm a prophet. I have a school of prophets that I'm running. And so I have so many things I'm doing apart from lecturing. And so now, some of us too, we, 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 we have some other vocations that we, we, we run, so which can make music to suffer. And I think it has become a challenge. So I call that inadequate commitment. Seven, decreasing spirituality, which has brought so much carnality into the into church music ministry today. We have seen all sorts of um, people that are not um, transformed, not born again you know, coming into church music and doing things. And unfortunately, we copy from them. Very sad, very sad. And uh, that, that's a big problem. I also note what I call economic challenges. Economic challenges, uh, part of which is a positive, a positive of um, fund in the church. Economic hardship for people who are interested in music, who like to train themselves or who like to be in music. And nobody is caring for them financially. The, that leads to the problem or the challenge of them, remuneration in, the ch in, in church music. Why there are denominations, like my own church denomination, whatever you do for, in music in the church, you are doing it for God. Whether you are an organist or choir director, you are not paid. Huh. But, um, you know, people are now raising questions. Why do we serve pastors are collecting salaries, which we should be collecting salaries. And I even, I had in one denomination recently, the ushers are also asking for salaries. It's because they said that some instrumentalists were being paid, you know, so it's becoming a, a, a very big challenge. This, the attitudes of instrumentalists are another very serious challenge. Who will come to the church and want to arrogate power to themselves uncontrollable, they want to dominate the scene, they want their instrumentation to be louder and, uh, you know, you know, override the, 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 the wordings of the music that's supposed to minister to us. And as if that's not enough, after playing their instrument, they show their dexterity, which is their interest. When it is time to, for prayer, when it's time for a message, you, you can't find them. They are gone. 
So it has become a very serious challenge. Sometimes we go and borrow from outside to come and play in the church, and it's polluting our worship. Uh, the nature of music ministry uh, in a seminary setting, in a seminary community like this, another challenge. I've been pitying my colleagues in this place. They are overworked. I can't, I can't hide that. Like my colleague have said, you know, the other time, you know, by the time other students are relaxing, that's when our work has started. A one unit, a one credit course or load in theology or something or education will mean three or four uh, uh, credits in music. Because you have to be in the studio, you have to be practicing, you have to be there. Because to acquire skill, you have to practice. There's no any other way. So it's a challenge. Since we have started the conference, I would not, I would not know any section when the music people, music faculty, will not be here. They just have to be here. They just have to be here. And yet we still expect the same level of uh, output in terms of scholarship from... Uh, so we, it's a challenge. Well, I have the powers that be around me. They will, they will help us out. Then I want to talk about the, the influence of secular music, the influence of secular music, information technology, social media, you know, on our music ministers. I think that has been very, very negative, more of negative than positive. Then I, lastly, I talk about declining standard of church music education. We can't deceive ourselves here. We cannot compromise standards. A music minister has to be skillful. Skillful. Even right from the uh, biblical perspective. But in a situation, thank God for the background, the, the, the foundation laid here, to which our professors have attested. Nowadays, we are compromising some of those things. Some students, they don't want to do their proficiencies. Some, some students, they are lazy. They just move from one thing to the other. So I think that um, that has given us a very big challenge. And to round up, I'd like to suggest that we music ministers need perseverance. We need commitment to do more. We need continuous learning, which uh, Professor, uh, our leading professor from Baylor has emphasized. We need to join hands together to work on these challenges. We need to educate the stakeholders. I want to suggest that the faculty of church music as from next year, let's start to host music ministers' conference here. What is wrong with that? To educate, to educate, to educate, you know, uh, the practicing musicians. I want to suggest that uh, we focus on what I have been fighting for over these over this years, what I call transformative music ministry. Can we minister music not just for enjoyment, not just for, for show off, but for the purpose of transforming lives? I think that will help us. Leaders and teachers, we should start walking the talk. When we talk something, when we teach something, let us practice it. It will help us. Prayer is very, very essential. And finally, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 28. Let us let me read in NLT. Since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, let us be thankful and then let us please God by worshiping him in holy, in holy heart and with, with respect, with adoration. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, I think with, with all these challenges, um, we would like to ask uh, Professor Inaya, uh, what, what practical steps can the church take to effectively engage uh, music ministry to expand God's kingdom? Uh, 
All right, thank you very much, uh, moderator. I'd like to just mention um, not, not 13 points, uh, but just four points. Um, suggestions as to what the church can do, should do, to engage music ministry for the expansion of God's kingdom. Number one, I will suggest that we do more in training and engaging more Christian musicians. That we do more in training and engaging uh, Christian musicians. The training part is what MBTS is doing. And um, yes, we need to take some uh, take the corrections, the suggestions that uh, Prof. Adediji has made in improving the work we are doing of training. Um, but the other part also is the engaging of more music ministers. And that is the part that our churches ought to do for us. Um, frankly speaking, I have been expecting that by now, I was expecting that by now, almost every Baptist church in our convention will have a music minister. Um, I, I was expecting that by now would have made a lot of improvement um, in that area. But we still have many of our churches, big churches, large congregations, and they don't have a trained music minister. And um, even the ones in Oguma Show here who have the advantage of having the seminary, um, if you cannot pay a full-time music minister, you can get a student pastor to serve and contribute in that area of the work of the church. But several have not taken advantage of that. So um, I think we will need to find a way to emphasize the training and engaging of more of our Christian musicians who have been trained. And then secondly, uh, we need to work towards enhancing musical and theological literacy in our churches. Um, we need to work more in that direction. Like I mentioned in my first um, uh, comment, um, there are churches now that have stepped down the use of hymns. Uh, that, for me, that's a danger signal. It's an alarm that we need to sound. That we shouldn't have a Baptist church, even if it is a young people's church, even if it's a student's church, even if it is 100% youth, we need to teach our children how to sing and how to use these hymns and how to come to appreciate them because of the value that they have. Uh, for me, that is important. And then we also find that there are churches where sometimes songs that you cannot call Christian songs are used in the worship. Um, I cannot forget a worship service where I attended and I had a choir special. They were singing, I believe in angels. I believe in angels. Maybe because angels are mentioned in the song. They thought it's a Christian song. But I don't think that's a Christian song. And it was a choir special. And I think we need to improve uh, musical, theological literacy in our churches. I have also had worship services where they sing, you raise me up so I can stand on mountains. And this is not a gospel song. It's not a Christian song. And you will find a worship service where that is used. This other one by R. Kelly the storm is over. I'm not too certain that that, is, that that qualifies as a Christian song. You know. 
So I, I think we need to improve our musical and theological literacy. Um, I don't know, I, I hear discussions and debates sometimes about the fact that you don't have a gospel tune. Tune can be used for anything. But I think lyrics is important. The lyrics is very, very important. Uh, we shouldn't just be singing anything. Uh, we should look at the meaning of the words, the history of the song, and to find out whether it can be used. And it's only by improving our musical and theological literacy that we can be in a position to make that kind of judgment. Um, thirdly, I like to suggest um, that in our worship services, we use more of theologically sound and theologically balanced songs in our worship. Now, theological soundness speaks to theological correctness. That's the one that we often talk about. But we don't often talk about theological balance, theological breadth. And that is a major concern to me. What I mean by that is that we should plan our music that we use in worship in a way that it can cover the various doctrines of the church. We should be very intentional in doing it. And what we find today, like I said before, is a situation where only one aspect of the Christian faith is being expressed in the music that we are using. We just use them without intentionally planning. And um, you will attend, you might attend a church from January to December. You will not find them sing a song, say for instance on um, eschatology, or sing a song on consecration, or sing a song on other major doctrines of the church. They are only singing about blessing. They are only singing about prosperity. They are only singing about just one side of our Christian doctrine. Um, so for me, theological balance is very, very important. And as music, worship, music ministers and as uh, pastors, we need to be a little bit more intentional and conscious about this. Um, I, I state this because historically, uh, Brother Gracious mentioned that um, music has always played a didactic role. Music is used for teaching. And music provides us an opportunity to ingrain the core doctrines of the church in the hearts and minds of our people. And we should not waste the opportunity. Uh, we should be very intentional in doing that. And then finally, I think, and this is um, a suggestion to our music faculty here, uh, we should work to prepare our students to explore available opportunities in the contemporary gospel music scene. And um, what do I mean by this? Our music faculty is 30 years this year. How many of our graduates are known or well-known contributors to the gospel music scene in Nigeria, even in Nigeria? All the recorded artists that we have, we don't have anybody among them. And yet we know what others do not know. And we have what others do not have. Oh, why don't we give our students the orientation that their music ministry should not end in the four walls of the church. We should engage the nation. We should engage the society. And we should contribute to um, improving the quality of understanding of the Christian faith that is out there by the kind of music that we release. And um, so we need to target the entire society, not just our churches where we have been called to serve. These are a few of my suggestions. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, uh, our time is uh, fast spent and um, so that we can give room for uh, other programs. Uh, but before we round up, uh, so that I will not deny our other 
uh, discussions of what they are prepared to tell us. I will just say that uh, from Professor Oyemomi, uh, maybe just in one sentence, uh, what you have for us. Uh, uh, Thank you, sir. Yes. Other things I have in relation to the problems, challenges itemized. We have a Yoruba proverb that says, if you want to carry a load, if you want a problem to solve, say, it, be, it should begin with you. You should bend down to carry your load. And by the time people see you carrying the load, you will see help coming from left and right. And so that one will make me uh, borrow a little from what Professor Yinaya shared. You know, the hymna is a companion to the Bible. The hymna is an amazing interpreter of scripture. There's a lot of scriptural passages and theology and doctrine of the church that defy explanation. But when you sing the hymna, it interprets them unprecedentedly. And that is to say the people that wrote these hymns, they are dedicated men of God. They spent time in the presence of God. They draw inspiration before they pen down their writings. Musicians of our day and of our category, we must perspire in the presence of the Lord to pen down something for the coming generation. We keep singing the song of Martin Luther and all the rest of them, which is ever new. It can never be outdated. If you want to take those in from the church, it's like taking away the Bible from the church. And it's not possible. So, in view of that, I want to passionately plead with our musician, trained pastor, to please solve your own problem first. And how do you solve that problem? It is by your dedication. See, this is the age where people are simply running after certificates. They want to enter seminary and while away time, like Prof has said, just mark time just for the semester to end. Whatever you want to submit. Anyhow, anyhow, just pass me. Once you get a pass, you just want to go. And at the end of the day, you become functionally um, illiterate as far as music is concerned. You see people who are not trained in music at all, who are performing when they handle microphone when you see them on the instrument and they never go to music school. So we need to do something serious about it because your output is going to determine the kind of reference and the placement that people will give to you. So that when people like us are talking, it will not be as if to say we are maligning our colleague. When, because here and there, we talk about some ills in the church and in our relationship as ministers and musicians. But then, you also have to justify your calling in the presence of the Lord by way of your skill, your dedication. Let's do away with rivalry. Please, your ministry is not a ministry of rivalry. If the senior pastor is riding jeep, pretend that you don't even see it. If it is time for you to ride jeep, the Lord will give you. I believe that one very well. And by the virtue of your training and your skill, you have the tendency to have, if you are looking for money, you can get more money than the pastors. Because to minister to their emotion on, unprecedentedly when you are ministering, and when you touch their life, they touch you without taking permission from anybody. There are a lot of testimony all around that I can say, but I don't want to waste your time. So, solving this problem, your personal commitment to the calling that God has given to you is key. Then, do away with pride. No matter how God is using you, no matter how great you are, no matter how God has promoted you, Avoid pride. Don't see yourself as 
without me in that church, nothing moves. Everybody depend on me. Don't depend on the popularity that you have. Because it is all for God. In the process of being this, we will add a lot of value to the music ministry. And the I and the output, the evaluation of our ministry and our profession, which we stand for out there, is going to take a new dimension and another outlook. On top of it is that the blessing of God itself that we ordinarily come upon you is also there. So that when some of us are saying something about the music ministry, they will have evidences to corroborate it around them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, like I said earlier on, uh, I think I will still I will have to apologize for uh, the many discussions uh, so that we uh, can give room. Uh, but we still like from the audience, uh, at least uh, either one or two uh, people to participate in this. Uh, we, uh, our, our visitors, our friend from Abila University, uh, will be interested in uh, what is your own uh, uh, thought about uh, this uh, the discussion. Then I will. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, since there are three ends, I mean, this, uh, let, let me. Oh. Ah. Okay. Now, we cannot give time for everyone to talk. Okay. Uh, my professor has helped me out. Uh, he says one, one comment. Just one, one comment. So that uh, everyone will have that. Uh, Opportunity to talk. Let me, uh, Dr. Rickett, please come up, uh, Reverend uh, Chamberlain and uh, Reverend Oshiolale, and then uh, we will round it up with uh, comments from uh, visitors from uh, Villa University. Thank Praise you. be to God. I want to thank God very much for uh, the symposium and the contributors, I must first declare to you that I have been thoroughly blessed. And I thank God because the men who contributed there, they are worship lovers. Huh? Everything you have taken, you have spoken, I've accepted them and they are good. We are going to be implementing them by the grace of God. But something is missing. It's like in all of this, we have not seen the negative role that the pastors play. I will mention that negative role because we are the pastors. No one will say it to us because they believe that whatever the pastor do, does is okay. But let's say it to ourselves so that we can make amendments because what we are expecting as a result of this is improvement. If we don't say the truth to ourselves, the improvement we are expecting, we won't have it. There is a way, sir, that pastors contribute a lot to the decline in the singing of hymns, in the love of hymns in the church. Time has gone. Just one stanza, and that is all. And this happens a lot. Pastors do not give us opportunities to sing. When we allocate time to various aspects of the program in the order of worship, everybody has to be disciplined. Even the senior pastor has to be disciplined. The senior pastor ought not to spend 15 minutes speaking and say he has cancelled all the hymns. When this happens from time to time, what we are going to observe is a decline in the love of hymns. That is one point. And the most serious, most serious one that may stun you, my professor, sir. I thank God that God took control. You may be surprised that there was a time in this seminary that our students succeeded in asking that him, the course Christian him Nodi should be expunged from their, from their catalog and it was expunged. It, no, nobody could fight. It took me to have to write to the president myself. 
I wrote on my honor that I, I, I do not want this. This will kill the seminary. They started making references to some other seminaries in the world. I said, I know that Christian Imnodi ought to be done. I wrote a personal letter to the president. Thank God that it was restored. I just asked my daughter, who takes Christian Imnodi now, that theology, our uh, faculty of theology is still taking Imnodi. I want to appreciate the effort of uh, Dr. Kolawole, who also waded into the matter. Sir, imagine if, if they had succeeded in removing Christian Imnodi, music fundamental from the catalog of the theologians and those in Ari, what will be, will be left it? So I think we pastors also, as educators, as preachers, we have a role to play. God bless you, sir. Thank you. And please, uh, please make it brief, please. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that we also encounter in our ministries in the churches recently. Now, when we are singing hymns, we thank God that uh, our senior pastors have their own personal microphones. And when the music ministers is conducting the hymn, the senior pastors who has their microphone pick up the mic and singing, even not singing wrongly, together with the music minister. So how many music conductors do we have in the church? That is number one. It's not good at all. When the music minister is conducting, let our senior pastors hold their mic, put it down, not to sing along, and even singing all the parts is happening in our denomination. Number two, after hours of rehearsals, though we know that to preach a sermon of one hour or 30 minutes, pastors also have a lengthy time to prepare. Likewise, the choir. For us to minister five minutes, we will have done over two days or three days rehearsals. But for the senior pastors to now come, we are not singing today. These things also affect our ministry. How can this be done, sir? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate uh, this talk. I want to talk on the part of uh, supporting our ministry. We are in the field that we are in the church. We know where it hurts. In a place where you share your vision with your senior minister, and the senior minister will tell you, I will not put it on the church program because I look at it like you want to form your own ministry. What will you do? Will you want to struggle and fight with your minister? Sometimes we, 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 we sit down in silence and pray that God please help us through. The other time you call on other minister, uh, people with the support, our own, how many of our own have we supported? How many of the music ministers that have album and our president will bring our ministers to the convention stand and say, everyone buy the CD. This one recorded, it is from our uh, MBTS, Moshe. This is a recorded CD. I've listened to it, it's good. Come on, bless this young man with it. And everybody will buy. Some of these names we hear, these are how they started in their own ministry. Then, in the church, when the music minister wants to organize something, you will see the pastor will say, no time. For example, where if this is a theological program now, here we'll be full. I was thinking this beautiful discussion will be put in our minister's conference so that our pastors will listen. Everybody had gone home. Everybody left this morning. So you are still talking to the music people who will go back I will not, if I want to put it in play, my senior minister will say no, and it is no. I can't fight him. I'm serving under him by God's grace. So please, sir, let us expand this so that our senior ministers outside get this good teaching to help us as music minister to grow. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Um, 
Well, the audience that need more of this talk, they are not here. Um, maybe that would have helped us. Sir, thank you very much, Prof. You said something about um, how do we talk about the curriculum. I think it all begins from the curriculum too and the intake of people coming to the faculty. Maybe if I'm asked with my little experience, having been a minister of music and being privileged by grace to be at the other side, I am seeing something and I'm seeing better. Maybe from the intake, anybody coming to the music faculty, let them spend the first year doing sight singing, theory, just only spiritual formation. Remove every other, every other bottlenecks, New Testament, Old Testament. Remove it in the first year. By the time that person is rounded, has gone through two semesters, we will know whether that person belongs to that faculty or not. Then the person can be sent to education. Or the person would have seen whether the person belongs to theology. But by the time we, it is cumbersome. When you ask the person, during my time, we add keyboard as three unit course. But now I learned it is a unit. Then I would rather go to the faculty of theology to go and fight for four units there. Let me see how we score 75 to have here. Then the keyboard one unit, I will be doing it adversely, whatsoever score I have, and that is the proficiency that is lacking out there, sir. So from the intake, during the course of people coming in, at the interview section, we'll be able to drill and know who and who. Then for first two semesters, let there be that. The, secondly, on the issue of uh, recognition, I do not know when we will have minist uh, minister's conference that will solely be on music, sir that will solely be on music, that we will have the audience full and the talk will be on this. Sir, convention, the last convention, we add newness, come entry into newness with praise and thanksgiving. Is that the... That's what we... No time for any music minister to come up. We have Reverend Ego. Reverend Ego can do anything for this convention. I want to believe free of charge. The convention will never recognize our own. The convention will be ready to look for other people and give them and, and even spur them to any level. But your own people, Reverend Ego is in worry. Reverend Ego travel around and he goes globally. We do not give him recognition. He, God, the Lord has enabled him to bring artists, foreign artists, down to this country. Then what are we doing as a convention? Sir, when we fail to give recognition to our own, nobody will give us recognition. Nobody, if we fail from here, and it begins from here, sir. Professor Eniyanasa, thank God for your integrity. Baba, you know me. Thank God for your integrity. I would rather say, submit that why not bring up issues about music? Let our pastors be seated. Let them talk about it. Let them talk about what is happening. Let us learn of issues. The issue of multi-staff, we are yet to get it at all. We are not there yet. We are calling pastors to come. We are calling ministers of music to come. But we are actually looking for keyboardists. So many of our churches are actually looking for keyboardists. And my colleagues, we too, we make it wrong. The moment you can play little saxophone, you now leave piano, you leave every other thing, you now concentrate on the piano on Sunday morning. Your work is bigger than that, sir. So, sir, if we look at this and we balance it, the issue of proficiency is key. Proficiency, Baptist, Baptist work in Nigeria is still keyboard music, whether we like it or not. 
is still keyboard music, whether we like it or not. Why not let's do more and see how we enhance and ensure. And lastly, colleagues, please, let's throw away pride. We are to compliment our pastors. We are not to compete with them. If I have, if I have competed with my late pastor, I wouldn't have been where I am today. Throw away pride. Even when your pastor neglects what you have submitted to him, in the spirit of humility, can you just say, Jesus said to John, let it be for now. Can you just leave those things? Even when your pastor molests you from the pulpit, even when he says we are not singing the song you have practiced for three, four weeks, and if he says you are not going to do it, can you in the spirit of humility and say, let it be for now? And it shall be well with us. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Um, I, I, think, I think I have to take permission from my dean because uh, I remember don't go away. Uh, permission from my dean because I know these, these uh, bunny issues and people really want to contribute. Reverend, want to speak from the perspective of church pastor? Okay, sir. Yes, yes. Um. I greet us all. I think we are enjoying it. We are enjoying the... Uh, when I spoke to Dr. Ingalls, she even said, that is why we are here. <laughs> we were concerned about the launch and all that, but let's still make some brief comments and then we learn from all of this. Thankfully, what we are discussing is on YouTube. We hope it will still go very far. To be a blessing. I think it's on YouTube. All right. Thank you. Thank you, my dean. I appreciate that. Reverend. Yes, sir. I want to appreciate the opportunity to also add one or two things to what have been said thus far. A lot of what our colleague in the music ministry have said are true and factual. Very true. In addition, just like they have requested that such a program as this be embedded in our minister's conference, I think it should be. <laughs> Formerly, we have a minister's conference. We have these hybrid groups, or what do you call them, sir? And we go for this syndicate groups. We go for this and this. And you do RE stuff. You do music. You do a bit of recent it has changed. And I think if we are doing a holistic ministry uh, re re reappraisal or revival, every part of the ministries in the church which have ministers of their own uh, capacity should be here to have access to whatever program. It should be, the programs should touch all the parts of the ministries in the church, not just the pastor, the pastor, the revival, and the like, and the like, alone. However, still, on the curriculum in the seminary, I now realize why I'm not happy with some student pastors from the seminary and why I've not called some as full-time music pastors. I've just heard that they take the music for one uh, unit course. Have somebody who has graduated from here with diploma, he cannot play the keyboard. He cannot play the keyboard. And I know how many hours our friend here and others spend even in playing the keyboard and the like. They will come to the church, play keyboard. They can't play keyboard. And these boys who did not go to the seminary are playing the keyboard. So they have no regard for the music pastor you have claimed you have brought. Three have come like that. They sidetrack them in the church. So it affected me. While well, I say this is the music pastor, the boys will leave everything. The music pastor cannot play keyboard, cannot play guitar, cannot play trumpet, cannot play drum set. They left everything. Three has happened concurrently. For the last one, we cannot send him away. I came to Dr. Hauda. Where's Baba? I told him. Said the only thing is, uh -huh. I said the only thing is, uh -huh. the only thing is, church, we know he needs assistance. Let him be on the ground that we are only assisting him. 
don't call yourself the music pastor for the choir. You are only here if you are given any opportunity. That, till this morning, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. If it's to play key half, you will be on C. If it is F sharp, you will be on D. While they are singing this, is playing this, I'll stop. Last two weeks, I stopped them from the pulpit. So, it is not their fault. Let the seminary, the faculty, look into what those who have, called, who have been called and claimed to have been called for music ministry need and give it to them. If you want the church to enjoy them and call them, leave them out of the too much theology too, like they have said. But let them have it too because they will preach. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Aliyaji. Um, yes, we, we have had all this and um, uh, we are going to work on them. Uh, by the grace of God, God will help us. Uh, we want to give chance to Dr. Bradley to help us say something uh, concerning this issue. Dr. Bradley is coming up to add his voice to some of these issues. But I want us to know from some things I read about Dr. Bradley is a veteran church musician. Are we listening? Hello? Please listen. Oh. Dr. Bradley is a veteran church musician. He has been a music minister since 1978. 1978. He has written a lot of books. Some of his books are Dr. Oda. Some of the books are in our library here. So if there is anybody we need to listen to, if you are having trouble with music ministry, I think we should listen to Dr. Bradley. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the very, very kind and generous words. I think that I could certainly summarize the conversation today as one of the most passionate that I've been a part of. Um, and I think where there's great passion, uh, there's great love. Uh, we don't get excited and talk with such um, great fervor about the things that we don't care deeply about. So I find great hope in the fact that we care very, very deeply about the music of the church, and we're all pulling for that, and that is our great, great desire. I also believe that in that great passion um, that we air our problems. And I think the first step to solving problems is letting them be known and expressing them. And I think it is very helpful for us to talk about our problems. And it, in a sense, we're talking about problems today in a family setting where we're all a part of the family of church music and we're talking about them in the right kind of place and in the right way. The next P I would use for passion problems, uh, the next one I would use is progress. I think that we are talking today about problems that represent progress. What I find incredibly hopeful about the conversation today and the conversation in Dr. Ingalls' class yesterday is that we are not trying to establish church music here. Church music is established. It is firmly rooted. It is at home. We are trying to refine it. And my friends, any time that we're refining something, that is better than starting it up. We can take what we have and improve it by knowing that it's not perfect, and then we can make great progress. So what we're talking about today is progress. And the last of my four P's, words that start with a P, I would say is pastoral. Everything that we do today and everything that we do in the future, it must be pastoral or it will not last. And it must include, to solve a problem, we must include everybody who has a stake in the problem. And so what I'm hearing is the call to bring pastors and music ministers together for conversation, for dialogue. That is the way forward. That is the only way forward is to have everybody in the same room to talk about the same things with some people who can guide that conversation productively and helpfully and in a pastoral way. 
Because at the end of the day, pastors and ministers of music are all out for the same thing. And that is really what the title of our conversation has been about today, which is increasing the kingdom of God in our world. And we are all about that. And what we have to do is recognize that and bring that to the table. I also believe that solutions to problems always lie within the people who care. So I think the solutions are in this room even. I think they are right here. They are not to be found in some strange out of the way place, but the solutions are among us. And we simply must um, find those solutions. I would just like to say one thing that doesn't fit my little um, words with a P. I find great hope in this group of students over here to my left, the students who sang in the choir. And I am hearing your passion and I'm hearing that you are a very, uh, that you care deeply about this. And that brings immense hope for all of us that this younger generation, this group of students, that they care very deeply and they want to see things change for the better. So um, we depend on young people to, for challenge in the church. And those of us who are older and more steeped, we have to keep hearing from young people because if we don't hear from young people, progress does not start, rarely does it start with old people. It almost always begins with younger people and hearing those voices. So thank you for contributing that. Thank you, sir. Uh, please, there are two questions here. And uh, I want to say that the questions have been answered. But uh, so that the person who sent this to me will not uh, feel offended. Yes, the questions have been answered. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for recognizing that. So we don't need to repeat that. Ah, okay. Baba, Professor Adegbite, please give him a mic, please. Uh, I want to comment our discussions for brilliant uh, discussions uh, which uh, you have all made. The points raised were very genuine. And uh, I think that uh, it, it, I mean, that point, I mean, those problems uh, do not start right now. It start, uh, started a long time ago. I want to say that uh, there are two or three things which uh, we have to look at. Uh, Yoruba people will say, Amoko, Elwewo. Only okay, they will. I'm sorry, they will wear okay. A knock kneel person carries some loads on his head, and people are complaining that uh, the way he stands is crooked. So he said, You are looking at the thing on my head, you are not looking at uh, the up and down below, the side where uh, the problem uh, really started. Some few years ago, I caught the attention of uh, Dr. Davison and uh, Professor Ilori, because these are the people that were really into the music at that time, that the uh, point of admission into the music program uh, is not very strong, because at that time, you have uh, students who pass out and cannot sing. They can't play any instrument. And uh, I was saying that if you want to make uh, this uh, program to be viable, something must be made compulsory for those who want to come in. Um, I don't know what uh, happened for one reason or the other, uh, it wasn't taken wholeheartedly. And uh, some people will want to write something on piano. I'd, and I'm talking about postgraduate uh, uh, program. You want to perform. 
you have not uh, you did not perform in your uh, I mean your undergraduate you didn't perform when uh, you are doing your masters you want to perform in a phd and i said uh, how do you do that there were a lot of things that we are i mean a lot of expectations that we uh, look for in those people that want to de get uh, the degree into music but if you don't have the prerequisite uh, things that you use, it's going to be very difficult. So we, we are looking at this thing, and we know it's very beautiful. That is what is expected. But there are things which are very difficult to attain. And uh, so my point is this. If the students or those who are going to go into music at the seminary level. There must be a way by which the point of entry should uh, be made very, very uh, convenient so that it will help them to go through it. Somebody has just saying that we should uh, uh, emphasize uh, rudiments of music, uh, theory of music, and then we think that uh, this is all that it takes. But it takes more than that. And don't forget, we are going through the teaching problem or the teaching, uh, teaching uh, stage in our music program. Uh, Rome, they said, was not built in a day. And we know that for people to reach that level that we are looking for, uh, it has to go through different uh, um, stages. The music that is very common in the church today, and uh, wh when you go to a typical church in the United States, uh, you will find that uh, a lot of uh, people that uh, are churchgoers are not necessarily young people, at least where I studied. You have a lot of old people and uh, there is limit to what you should be ex expecting from uh, them. Maybe if uh, one goes to the south, you may be able to have this in, in uh, those areas. But what I'm saying is this. A church with a choir will require that those at the end of affairs in music are people who are really trained musicians. You are talking about uh, 30 years ago. Before then, how many churches in Nigeria, even in Ogumo here, have uh, music pastors? And how many do we have now that have music pastors? We have close to about 500 churches. So these are the problems which it will take time to, uh, to be fulfilled. We are not expecting that uh, all those beautiful things that you are saying is going to happen now. We've been struggling for it for a very long time. And uh, I hope that uh, one day, somehow, we'll be able to reach that uh, goal. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for everyone that has contributed and has participated in this. Surely uh, we are growing and we know that by the grace of God uh, we will get there in Jesus' name. Uh, we still have room for improvement. Uh, as we have noted, by the grace of God, the seminary is going to do something. We have a forum where pastors and church musicians uh, we gather together for dialogue and where we will still iron some of these things out. And I want to assure you that the, the faculty will do something about all our agitations and all that we have mentioned. We want to thank our discussants for uh, a good job, for what they have done. Uh, I know they still have more to tell us, but because of time, uh, we may not uh, 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 continue on that, but we thank them for a good job, a, a job well done for 
sharing their thoughts and for helping us out. So please, let's uh, appreciate them again. Let's give them, give them a round of applause. So why they go back to say, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. We appreciate. Thank you very much. So uh, we come to the end of our, our symposium. Uh, surely you know that we see I have a lot to share. We see I have a lot to discuss. But because of time, uh, let us leave it like this. Pray that the Lord, the Lord will continue to help us in Jesus. And thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dr. Nishola Fashikwe, sir. Dr. Fashikwe was a former dean. He went to the U.S. to do further studies and is back now to impact us positively. We welcome you, sir. We are moving ahead. We will take a few minutes of praises as we have so that we don't, uh, we don't remove that and then we will go ahead with uh, the unveiling of Jonas quickly, the launching and the fundraising. We want to greet all of us who have come from far and near. We ask that you still be a bit patient with us as we do that, as we continue. We appreciate the presence of uh, Dr. Adedeji. Please come forward, sir. Dr. Adedeji is from the, C uh, the Apostolic Church, Christ Apostolic Church. And he has a lot of passion for music. Director of, uh, he will, okay, he will tell a bit about himself and then just say a few words. But I want to say that while we were preparing for the 30th anniversary, he has a program that he conducts on Parrot FM, a radio station. And without us asking him or giving me anything, he was broadcasting this uh, program free of charge, promoting us. I was sitting in the office and I received this call and he said, ah, you are online, live on radio. So can you say a few things about the 30th anniversary? And then I also spoke out about this. So we welcome you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Um, we want to thank everyone for being here. And I'm so glad for being part of uh, this symposium and all we've been doing. Uh, concerning music, we must promote church music together with the pastor. All we've been saying, the, our professors have been talking, they, call, they talk about uh, being skillful musically. Um, I want to say, I used to watch the Western music, the start music from the cradle, in which is so lacking in our own community. I could remember that uh, when I started some years back concerning um, educating music, musically, I mean, the children. So it has grown up to a wonderful time in which when I invited uh, Dr. Awuda, these children that have grown up, most of them have just got into uh, admission to the university, but they can play throughout the whole world now. I think uh, if the church can start from that, entering the, the, uh, the, the seminary for music, they must have uh, been taught the musical rudiments before coming to the college. So, uh, I want to suggest that every family, if every member can produce just one, one uh, uh, organist, at least it will go a very long way. Before they can uh, 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 um, uh, hear the call of coming to become a music minister, they will have been rooted musically. So if you can do that, I believe it will, ve it will go a very long way. I want to appreciate everyone. The Lord will continue to bless you. Thank you. We are so grateful, sir. The Lord bless you. The praise team. Praise team. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
I want us to rise to give praise to the Lord as we continue in this celebration of 30th anniversary of the faculty of church music. We are giving, giving, giving.